Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and this is my third video in walking you through the Azure portal. In this video, I'm going to walk you through using the Cloud Shell. So far, we've been working in the Microsoft Azure portal, and we've been using it to create resources and manage our dashboards. But now we're going to talk about the CLI, and the command line interface is something you usually put on your desktop. And here you can see I'm actually running it in Bash on my Windows PC right now. And you can see I have all these different commands that I can run. And basically, I can do almost anything the portal can do using the CLI. But why on earth am I talking about the CLI when we're talking about the portal? Well, it turns out that the new version of Azure Portal now has the ability to run the Cloud Shell which is essentially the Azure CLI on the web in the browser. So this is pretty cool stuff, and we're going to walk through it in this video. Now, what I'm going to point out here is that you can usually run this if you're starting off a new Azure uh, instance. However, you might go to run this just by clicking the CLI thing there and get this message saying that you need to persist account files first. And I'm going to walk you through this because this may or may not work as easily as you think. Now, before you can use the CLI, you need to persist your account files. What does this mean? It's basically going to set up a folder for you to store some of your command line files. You can actually create them on your computer and upload them to Azure or create them in Azure and download them to your computer. But you have to do this in order to use the CLI. So the first thing you're going to do is click this Create Storage. Now before I do this, what I will point out is that this may or may not work. If you click Create Storage, you might just get the CLI, or you're going to get something like what's going to happen to me. Here it says, storage creation failed, error 409, and you get a code, missing subscription registration. Now I'm going to point out this code is more important than the error message or the error number. And it's going to tell you to go to a certain URL to look up that error message. I'm going to open up another tab in my browser, and we're going to find out what this has to say. Okay, so we're at this web page now, and you can see I'm at the missing subscription res registration section. If you received another error message, there's a whole bunch of different things here listed that you can do. Now, I'm going to tell you up front, the reason for why you received these errors are not all that helpful. Uh, API version not supported for the resource type. I really don't know what that means. Location not supported for the resource type. I think I know what that means. It has something to do with the region uh, for, for Azure, but you know, it's not really clear. I do know, however, that I am in a region that should support the CLI. So I'm going to go ahead and follow these instructions. And the reason for why I have the website up is because I want you to understand kind of how to, if you will, read these instructions because they were clearly written by uh, some people that, you know, maybe just had to type up some stuff, but didn't really think through uh, the fact that maybe some users are new to using Azure. So, for example, it says, for your subscription, select resource providers. Let me jump back to Azure, and I'll come up here to search resources, and I'm going to type resource providers. You can see no results were found. So what's going on? How come I can't find that? And if I come back here, you can see there's a screen capture, and you're not really sure what that screen capture is of. Well, it turns out this is the key word you need to be looking at. For your subscription, select resource providers. So now let's go back here and search for subscription. And we'll go ahead and click on the subscriptions key. And now I'm going to choose the subscription that I'm going to work with here. And 
Next, the instructions tell me to find resource providers. Now I can come down here and you'll find a resource providers. Okay, so now we've got that settled. The next thing that the instructions are telling us to do is to look at the list of resource providers and if necessary, select the register link to register the resource provider. Well, what on earth are you supposed to be registering? This screen capture doesn't necessarily tell you everything that you need to select. So how do we know? Well, let's go ahead and run this cloud shell thing again. And let's go ahead and once again, click create storage. And the giveaway here is the namespace and it says Microsoft.storage. Okay, so we do not have a registered Microsoft.storage. So what we'll do now is look around here for Microsoft.storage. And you can see here it says not registered. So I'll go ahead and click register. And you can see now it's saying registering. This registration page may not actually update right away for you. So you can click the refresh link here and it will let you know what's going on. And now you can see Microsoft.storage is all set up. Let's go ahead and try this again down below. We'll click create storage. Actually, what I'm going to do is close that and rerun it and click create storage. There. So now you have the CLI installed in your uh, subscription and you can start using it. Since this video has two parts, one helping you get the CLI up and running and the other to actually show you how to use it, I'm going to start from scratch to show you how to use the CLI from the dashboard, the portal homepage. I suggest you actually use the dashboard page for the most part because you can list out all your resources here and you'll probably be working with those quite a bit. So let's come up here to the top where it says Cloud Shell and click on that. If you haven't figured it out yet, Cloud Shell and CLI, just think of those as the same thing, CLI standing for Command Line Interface. You can run Bash, which is a scripting language for Unix, or PowerShell, which is coming soon, which is the Windows programming language for scripting. So you can use either of those. To get started, we can just type AZ and press Enter. AZ, of course, stands for Azure. And if I scroll to the top, you can see there is the Azure logo, and here is all the base commands that you can run. Now, I'm going to create a new resource in this BR Expense App resource group. I'm actually going to create another web app. So to find out how to do that, you can see there is actually a command here called web app. So what you do is you just type AZ web app and then just do a space dash minus sign H. And when you do that, that gives you online help. And you can see here there's a number of commands. Browse the web apps, create them, delete them, list them. Well, what I want to do is create one. So now I can type AZ space web app space create dash H. And if we scroll up here a little bit, you can see that there's a number of arguments that that command requires. It needs a name, a, a group, and a plan. Now notice these dash dashes, so dash dash name, dash dash plan. Ignore those in this case, because you can just see the dash n and dash p here. So I got a little confused with these dash dashes originally, and I realized pretty quickly if I'm just doing these basic things, I don't need to type them. And you can see here there's an example that's listed. Microsoft gives you a lot of examples when you're doing this. And you will notice that in some examples you need to use those dash dashes, but not when we're doing this bash command. Okay, so let's go ahead and type az web app create. This time we're going to type dash g. It's asking for a group. That's this BR Expense App RG. So BR Expense App 
RG. That's a resource group I created earlier. And then it's asking for a plan. This is the service plan I created earlier. If you remember, I actually created this in a previous video that uh, uses the free tier, the F1 plan. So I'll just go ahead and type BR expense app SP, and then it's asking for a name, dash N. Well, I already have one web app here called BR expense app. So I'm just gonna create this one and call it BR Azure CLI test app and press enter. Once the creation is done, you'll get this JSON format that shows you all of the detail of your new resource. Now, how do I know this is created instead of an error? Well, probably you'll see some text in red and some other issues, but you can see here, there's the default host name, BR Azure uh, test client, and so it looks like it's, it's doing pretty well. But let's make sure that it's there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type AZ web app dash H again. And this time I'm gonna find list. And so if I type AZ web app list dash H, you can see it gives me a number of different commands. I'm gonna look over here and take a look at the output formats. I don't want to receive the default, which is the JSON format. I just want a simple table view. So I'll type az web app list dash o table. And when I do that, here's the response I'll get back. And you can see right here is our Azure CLI test app. Okay, one thing you need to be aware, you have this dashboard up here and right now we're looking at the expense app resource group, yet that new resource does not exist here. Well, if you do want to see it, unfortunately, as of the creation of this video, this won't refresh for us automatically. So what you need to do is click your mouse somewhere in the dashboard if you want to see it actually listed on the page and refresh your browser. What's going to happen when you refresh your browser is there will be our new resource but also it kills the command line interface, the, the cloud shell. So if you wanna get back to the cloud shell, you will have to run it again and it won't have remembered anything that you typed earlier. Okay, so now we want to delete this new web app that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and type az web app delete dash h. Now, how do I know that there was a delete command? Well, remember, I can always type az web app dash h and it will say, yep, there is a delete command. So I can just type az web app delete dash h. And now I can see how to delete the resource. Now, there is a number of ways I can do, go about doing this. If I have a whole bunch of resources to delete, to delete, then I can just type the IDs. But I just have one. And so I'm just going to go ahead and type az web app delete dash n, and that's the name of my resource, and that's BR Azure CLI test app. And then it wants to know what group that's in because you can actually put these into different groups. And this happens to be in the this group up here. So BR expense app RG, and press enter. If the deletion occurred properly, then you're probably just going to get nothing more than a blank blinking line at the next, uh, after you press enter in the next line. So that doesn't necessarily mean that anything went wrong. It just meant that there were no errors to show. So at this point, we have deleted that resource. But what you should be aware of, whether you're doing this manually or you're using the CLI, you know, whether I'm going in and physically going to this web app and deleting it or not, this is just in a queue. So it might take minutes or hours even for a resource to delete. So just be aware, you might think you've deleted something and it looks like it worked and then you still see it in the list. Well, that's just because it's still being deleted by Azure. So let's find out if it has been deleted. I'll type az web app list dash o table. And there you can see that that web app no longer exists. 
And notice that it did actually happen to refresh here on the dashboard. Sometimes that's gonna happen, sometimes that's not gonna happen. Fortunately, it did for us this time. Okay, I hope that gave you an overview of the Cloud Shell. So I'm just going to give you a few last tips. This is a big one that's on the screen right now. I'll also put this URL in the notes for the YouTube video. Basically, Microsoft does allow you to mount a drive in Azure. So if you create scripts on your computer and you wanna upload them, you can do that. If you wanna create scripts on Azure and download them to your computer, you can do that as well. That's a great link to follow. There's too much involved in setting that up uh, for this video, so I'm not doing that. A few tips about using the Cloud Shell here. First of all, you should be aware that you can actually move it. Just bring your mouse to the top of the Cloud Shell uh, title bar here, and you can move it all the way up to the top of the portal and then pretty far down to the bottom as well. There is, of course, a minimize, and the minimize you actually have no idea that it's still open, so, but if you do click the Cloud Shell again, you can see there's your Cloud Shell command. It didn't restart. Do be aware though, it will restart after 10 minutes, despite even your minimizing it. Of course, there's a maximize button, so that brings you to the full screen view and a restore button. If you wanna close the Cloud Shell and make sure that you've saved your work and there's nothing you wanna remember on the screen, click close. When you do that, that'll actually stop running the Cloud Shell. So when you click it to run again, it'll start a brand new session and you'll lose all the work on your screen. If for some reason you want to refresh this Cloud Shell, you don't want to click close and then come back here and run it again. Of course, there is a restart Cloud Shell button. You can just go ahead and click that and all of that will happen for you on the screen. There, so now that we've got the Cloud Shell back up and running again, I'm gonna show you one last command. This is actually one of my favorites. I am still reminding myself of my old MS-DOS days. I'm gonna create some text on my screen where I used to just love typing, whoops, where I just used to love typing CLS for clear the screen. You can't do that in Cloud Shell. What you do is you type the word clear, and when you type clear, that will clear the screen for you. And so those are just a few tips. Finally, there is the Azure CLI documentation. This is actually really good documentation and it's a great website. So you can go ahead and click that. And as Microsoft updates it, it'll also update. There's a, actually one more thing that I think I will share with you. And that's that you can open up multiple cloud shells. You do that by opening up your portal in yet another browser tab. And when you do that, you can have this Cloud Shell in that, this tab and another Cloud Shell in another tab. So you can actually open up multiple Cloud Shells and perform multiple activities in multiple tabs on your browser. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if this was a useful video for you and please subscribe to our channel. It's really helpful for us if you're looking for more videos. Thank you.